Welcome in, Hawks fans, to the Atlanta Hawks fan show, fan media. It's your boy Bryce Lewis back again, and we have a very special guest, producer and writer at 92.9 Dame, Garrett Chapman. Welcome into the show, sir. Hey, Bryce. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. You know, it's just... You know, it's a very exciting time, man, in, in Atlanta sports right now, especially with the Hawks coming up and the playoffs are right around the corner against the Knicks, man. And, you know, it's, it's I guess, you know, I think fans right now are honestly holding a lot of stuff in right now because I kind of just want to go dive right into it. Um, Obviously playing the New York yeah. weekend, Sunday's game one. And I know a lot of people throughout this year, especially in the Hawks fan base, has felt like, at least in the media, we haven't gotten that respect. And I don't know if you've seen that image of the ESPN people picking uh, the Knicks and Hawks series. And I obviously got a lot of people. Oh, yeah. So I just wanted to ask you first, just what do you think about this series on paper? Like, do you, do you expect this to be seven games? Do you expect this to maybe be a quicker series? Like, how do you expect this series to go? What, do, what is your preview of this series in your eyes when you see this matchup on paper, especially with the Hawks, basically as healthy as they've ever been all season? Yeah. Uh, so the Hawks are coming back and they are getting healthy. I think that's really going to be a big storyline for the Atlanta Hawks on that side. But it's going to be a physical series. I mean, the New York Knicks, uh, Thibodeau is, is, he has a reputation of being very, very physical, especially when it comes to the playoffs. And and really the biggest storyline for me going into this is, is that physicality and then the lack of experience because neither team really has any experience. I think it's Clint Capella and Lou Williams are the only two guys with any real playoff experience for the Atlanta Hawks. Mm. Um, so that's really going to be a big thing that I'm going to be watching. Uh, but as far as the media is concerned, I, I, I don't think that, that anybody should really be worried about it. I mean, you have the league headquarters based in New York. <laughs> I mean, it's the mecca of, of basketball. I mean, uh, of course, all half those guys are, are Knicks fans. So <laughs> I don't really put it past them necessarily. So, but I, I don't I don't worry too much about it. I figured they were going to pick the Knicks anyway. You know, I think I saw somebody tweet about it. It was a uh, sixteen guy, uh, sixteen writers. I think picked mm-hmm. uh, picked the series in like fourteen. I think picked the Knicks, which I think is ridiculous. Yeah. I think it's going to be a lot closer of a series than that. Um, but it's, I think somebody tweeted, they said, oh, well, actually, if you switch the rosters and everything and, and you just put the Hawks up in New York, 16 out of 16 would have picked the Knicks that time. So <laughs> you never know. But I mean, yeah. it, but at the same time, they're going to pick the team that they're most comfortable with and the team that they hear the most about. And they don't hear a lot about the Hawks. They don't really know us too well. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a big thing also. It's just like, especially the casual fan, because they rely a lot mm-hmm. on the media to kind of tell them about other teams. And so the media kind of treats the Hawks like, eh. You're not going to really hear and think, oh, the Hawks are that important. But so going back into the series, you know, one, I think one person I think a lot of people are really uh, happy we're getting back for this series is DeAndre Hunter. Uh, he's going to be playing the series. I think we're I think we're expecting him to start. We'll see what the lineup is when it actually comes. But, you know, people are saying he'll be the primary guy on Julius Randle. Can you talk about that matchup? Would it be safe to say that DeAndre Hunter could be the X factor in this series potentially? He's possibly the most important piece for the Atlanta Hawks. He only played one game against the New York Knicks. And in that game, I think, so Julius Randle averaged 37 some odd points per game against the Atlanta Hawks this year. He played out of his mind. Mm. Uh, I think the one game that DeAndre Hunter like matched up against him is the only time he didn't drop 40. <laughs> he actually, he dropped 28 points, which is still a great basketball game. And Julius Randle has had a spectacular season and, and uh, you can't really take that away from him. He's, he's been, spe- he's been very good. Very, very good. And, but I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, DeAndre Hunter, his play, his health, if he can come in and, and not lock down Julius Randle, but kind of take him out of rhythm a little bit and make him maybe miss a shot or two that, that he wouldn't miss normally. Like the Olympics are going to be set up to succeed in this series um, because they relied very heavily on Julius Randle in those in those games that, mm-hmm. that they ended up beating the Hawks. Um, they did go 3-0 against, against us, and Julius Randle averaging 37 points per game and something like 12, 13 rebounds, that, yeah, that had a lot to do with it. Yeah, definitely. I think... That's going to be a big thing. Even David Millen acknowledged in, in, in his press conference that we didn't guard him the right way. So I'm sure he's going to try to make adjustments. You know, I heard that he mm-hmm. gave everybody on the team the playoff packet. So I was like, OK, so he's giving him the whole game plan, strategies, everything. So it sounds like he's trying to get these guys yeah. ready to go. Um, so I guess my next question is, so obviously this team is very deep. So in the playoffs, mm-hmm. usually you see teams shorten their lineups. The Hawks, though, have the ability to stay if they want it to 10, but at least it's the playoffs. You want your best players on the floor as much as possible. So how do mm-hmm. you see maybe Nate playing with the lineup? I think, obviously, after DeAndre, 
do you see Solomon Hill? Because he was probably our second best guy on Julius after them. Do you just go with John and Hunter, just grow with that? Like, how do you see him? Do you see him going 10 deep first? Or do you see him maybe shortening it to nine or eight? Um, I don't see him going down to eight necessarily, but I mean, I, it, it, you will see a, 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 a reduction in minutes for guys like Solomon Hill. I mean, it just, it is what it is. I mean, this is the, the NBA playoffs. Trey Young, you, you're going to be out there on the court. You're going to have to play a lot of basketball because the Hawks need the, they need the, those guys to be on the, on the court. And that's what they're paid to do. And I, I think that's really what you're going to see a lot of Solomon Hill. A guy like Solomon Hill is, is going to see a reduction in minutes. Uh, and Yeka Okongwu is someone who I'm going to be looking at a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it, his his play at the end of the season. Uh, I think he really elevated his game. Um, I, I don't see heavy minutes for him, but maybe like I don't know something like ten games, yeah, something like that. Uh, just someone to give a breather, someone someone to give a breather. But DeAndre Hunter, I I fully expect to be a full a hundred percent and to and to take the the lion's share of minutes, just because he's the guy who's going to be able to guard Julius Randle, um, and. Uh, like Bogey Bogdanovich, it's another guy. I mean, he's going to be on the floor a great deal. I'm interested to see the rotations. Like, what are you going to do with Kevin Herter? Are, are, are you going to, is he going to come off the bench? Do you want Bo, Bogey Bogdanovich to come off the bench? Because uh, you want to see, you want that second unit to have its score um, and uh, just opposite of Lou Williams. So, because mm. um, Lou Williams also has a history of kind of coming up small in the playoffs. So, I really want to see somebody opposite of him who can still put the ball in the basket. Yeah, definitely. I think, like I say, it's a lot of interesting decisions, but it's a good problem to have that know that you have multiple guys. Like It's a very good problem to have. You know, because yeah. depending on the series and the playoffs, you've seen it. Depending on matchups, it's like, okay, maybe we'll play him this series because we're going against a particular matchup. In another series, I might need to play him instead of him. It's, it's, it's one of those things where if every team's bought in, every player's bought in, they're going to be like, I understand, and we're going to hopefully hope for the best results. So before I let you out of here, man, I just want to get your predictions on the series. What do you think games, who's winning the series, and why? Uh, so the number one, it, it's going to be a physical series. It's going to be a very physical series. I, I am really excited to see what this young Hawks team can like, actually looks like in the playoffs. I want to see how Trey Young reacts to uh, officials potentially swallowing their whistle, mm. uh, where he's not going to get to the free throw line quite as much as he as he's used to. Because um, Thibodeau is going to throw everything he has at him. Uh, mm. And I'm really excited to see that. So it's going to be a physical series. I think that the depth of the Atlanta Hawks will win out. Uh, the experience factor is a big thing that I'm looking at, but neither team really is very experienced. Mm-hmm. I see this game going a full seven. I, I can really see the Hawks winning this series, but honestly, it's it's about as close to a flip of a coin. Uh, the the metric that you talked about earlier, the 14 to two ESPN anchors <laughs> pick or writers picking, uh, that that doesn't make any sense to me. I, I, this is a 50 50 matchup. Uh, I think it can go either way. Uh, I am. I feel comfortable picking the Hawks because I think that the depth and the the, the options that they have on the offensive side of the uh, of the back of, of the court, I think that's going to win out. So I'm going to pick the Hawks in seven. Yeah, definitely. I I, I think it'll be a six seven game series. I don't know my set number yet, but it's going to be six to seven. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think one thing also people have lost is that yes, we know the Hawks can score. But the Hawks have been second in defensive efficiency under Nick McMillan since he's taken over. And they've yeah. had moments where they've shut teams down offensively. So it's not like the Knicks are the only great defensive team in this series. And I feel like the Knicks can be offensively challenged at times if Randall isn't having it going. Because outside of that, maybe outside of RJ too, yeah. who are you really scared of on the Knicks offensively? So I think as well, the depth will lead out. I think we're gonna have we're we're gonna we're gonna have moments where we're going to have different guys having big games for us. It's not just always going to be Trey. Bogey might have a big game. You never know. If Kevin has it one game, he might be able to get more minutes late, and he may have 20. I feel like we have seven guys who could score 20, potentially, just because we've seen it during the regular season. You guys guys can, you know, get into the rhythm. So I, I definitely hope that, you know, everything works out well. We stay healthy throughout the series. And... You know, we've come out with a victory in New York, man. So, but definitely appreciate you coming on to the Atlanta Hawks Fan Show, man. Definitely appreciate you. Uh, tell everybody sure. where they can find you. Uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, at GChapATL. I also produce weekends at uh, 92 on the game here in Atlanta. So, uh, hopefully, I have some stuff coming out. You can always find that 92 on the game.com. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hawks fans, that was your Atlanta Hawks fan show. We'll see you next week. To host a fan show or appear as a fan on a fan show, create a profile in Fan Media Network. Then look for the news page in our website and fan show resources page. Help yourself.
We give show hosts a show graphic and team colors, a simple short show format, tips on pre- and post-production, ideas to get fans and guests on your show, Apple News distribution and show sponsorship sales and services to help featured show hosts earn money. Show hosts use our iPhone app to publish their shows. Our website supports Android users.